<coughs> Two three system calls. System calls provide an interface to the service made available by an operating system. These calls are generally available as routines written in C and C++. Although certain low-level tasks may have to be written using assembly language instructions. Application developers design programs according to an application program interface, such as Win32 API. Three common APIs are Uh, first, Win32 API for Windows systems, POSIX API for POSIX-based systems includes all versions of Unix, Linux, and Mac OS X, Java API for designing programs running on the Java Virtual Machine. The APIs specifies a set of functions that are available to an application programmer, including the parameters that are passed to each function and the return values the programmer can expect. The functions that mix, make up an API typically invoke the actual system calls such as the Win32 function create precise actually calls the NT create precise system call in the Windows kernel. The runtime support system for most programming languages provides system call interface that serves as the link to system calls. The system call interface intercepts functions calls in the API and invokes the necessary system calls within the operating system. Typically, a number is associated with each system call, and the system call interface maintains a table indexed according to these numbers. The system call interface then evokes the intended system call in the operating system kernel and returns the status of the system call and any return values. The caller need know nothing about how the system call is implemented or what it does during execution. Rather, the caller need only obey the API and understand what the operating system will do as a result of the execution of the system call. Thus, most of the details of the operating system interface are hidden from the programmer by the API and are managed by the runtime support library. The relationship between an API, the system call interface, and the operating system is showing less finger, you can see. When user develop application program, such as he wants to open a file, then he call the system call open file in user mode. Then the system call interface get the system call and pass it to the kernel. And the kernel receive the system call and the, the machine mode changed from user mode to the kernel mode. And according to the number, find uh, the kernel part for 
the open operation here. So then after furnishing the open operation, uh, the system return to the user mode from kernel mode and resume the execution of the user's application. Okay. Three general methods are used to pass parameters between a running program and the operating system. The first way, pass parameters in your registers. The second way, store the parameters in a table in memory. And the table address is passed as a parameter in a register, such as this picture. Passing of parameters as a table. The user program uh, called, para, uh, called the system call and store the parameters for the system call here, x. In the before call system call 13, the user will load the address x into this special register, this register. Then call the system call 13. And the operating system get this uh, less code and use parameters from table x. But here is the table address in the main memory. And we know that when the machine working in kernel mode, the operating system can address the whole physical memory include the kernel part and the user part. So the operating system can assess the parameter in the table X and after finishing also after finishing the operation the machine mode will return from the, use, uh, the kernel mode to user mode okay and continue to execute at the statement after system this system call. So and the third minor for passing parameter is push the parameters onto the stack by the user program and the pop off the stack by operating system kernel part. Some operating system prefer the block or stack method because those approaches do not limit the number or length of parameters being passed.